In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on designing engine mounts and whether to go with two centering rings like this or three centering rings like this. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today we're going to talk about engine mounts and some design philosophy in, in case you're designing your own rockets. Here I've got a clear body tube so that you can see inside. And we're going to be designing a rocket that has through the wall fins. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but I got slots here in the tube where I can install fins. And the purpose of this is called through the wall fins and it makes the rocket a lot stronger. The primary purpose of the engine mount is to make sure that the tube is concentric and parallel to the sides of this tube. So if you had an engine mount in your tube like that, it's going to be like a motorboat where it's going to just turn the rocket in that direction that it's tilted. So we need to make sure that it's nice and concentric and straight. And so we would put two centering rings in there to align things perfectly. The problem with two centering rings, especially with through the wall fins, is when we put the fins through, we want to get a glue fillet along that bottom edge to make sure that it's nice and strong and really bonds to this inside tube. So what we need to do is to have it in such a situation where we can get in from the outside. Once we got our fins in, we can come in through the back and put the fin fillets in this way, like you know, putting a blob of glue on a dowel and then just running along the edges of that joint. And that's a really good way to put a fin fillet in there. But the problem is, you know, we don't know if this tube is aligned straight or not. So that's the reason why people will go often go with three rings. So on this tube, I have a ring back here, a ring here, and then there'll be a third ring at the back. So this way I can put in the motor mount tube and I can slide this ring just past the edge of the slots. And then I can put my fins in and I know that this tube is already aligned and it's nice and straight. So then I can glue my fins in there like this. And then once you get them all in there and nice and straight, then you can come back and put the third ring on the back end and then just push it up against the back edge of the tabs on the fins just like that. And that works really good. Now when you're designing a motor mount tube like this, if this tube is really long, it's called a stuffer tube. And the purpose of the stuffer tube is to decrease the volume that the ejection charge has to pressurize to push the nose cone off. So the smaller the volume, the more pressure, the harder it's going to push it off. On a tube this diameter, it doesn't really matter. You only need to worry about that if your tubes get excessively large, maybe like five inches or, in, or six inches in diameter or larger, but something this small, it's not a concern. But that's the purpose of the stuffer tube. When you design a motor mount tube that has three rings though, make sure that the distance between the front two rings is greater than the body tube diameter. So if I take my body tube diameter, the, the furthest back that I would want this front centering ring would be right here. So basically if I slid this one up or if I slid this one back, that's the position that I would want it. I need about that much length to make sure that everything's nice and straight. And that's the sole purpose of that is to make sure that it's nice and straight. When you're working with two rings, there's a couple of different options. First, we can put in the ring like this, and we can take one centering ring, the back centering ring like this, and drill some holes in it, and then run through some cord like this. And what this allows you to do is, once you have it on there and pushed inside, I could just grab the strings later and pull them out. So what I would do is put that front ring in, glue this one in place before it's, the glue's dried, Put this one in to make sure that it's nice and centered and then at the same time you can also glue your fins in and then once your fins are dry and all that glue is dry then you would pop this off then come in put your fin fillets in on the inside and then you can finally put your back centering ring in there like that so that's one method that you could do Another method that's kind of similar is in some of the Apogee kits, we've gone ahead and created a alignment jig. And the purpose of this alignment jig is to align this tube 
and make sure that it, everything is nice and straight. So again, I would, I would put that alignment jig in and that centers everything up. I'd glue that front ring. And at this point, you could actually take that out and then glue these in or leave it in and then glue your fins in. And then it's the same thing. Allow that glue to dry, pull it out, come in and put on your fin fillets, and then finally put on your back centering ring. So there's a number of ways you can do this. None of them are incorrect. Everything's gonna work. It's all a really a preference. Making one of these takes a little bit of time. Putting extra holes in your centering ring like that doesn't take a lot of time. It's just a matter of drilling six holes in it. Try to space the holes 120 degrees apart so that it's nice and even, so you get even pressure when you're pulling out. Also make sure that the knot is on the outside so you, you can always cut the line and then pull it out. If the knot's on the inside, sometimes it can be difficult to get the knot through the holes. The size of the holes, you can make them as small as the diameter of the cord, and I've made mine a little bit bigger, obviously. So that is a little bit of design philosophy on designing engine mounts, whether you're going two rings or three rings like this one here. If you'd like to have more information on designing rockets, we have a book called Model Rocket Design and Construction. This book I wrote probably 15 years ago. We've updated it a few times since then. And it has all kinds of design philosophy, rules of thumb in it, and that will help you design better rockets. Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan. You've been watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.